Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Alexa and today I have with me a very special guest. Her name is Julia Fernandez. She has a YouTube channel here on YouTube and she has invited me to participate in her very special project. It's called the Design Tag. Now how this works is basically Julia and I will be asking questions of each other, both about design and about life. And she's going to be posting the first half of the questions on her channel. And I will be posting the second half right here on this channel that is this video. At the very end of each of our videos, we're tagging a couple of our friends to invite them to do something similar. And with that, I think I'm gonna let Julia introduce herself. Hi everyone, my name is Julia Fernandez. I'm a design, fashion, and lifestyle content creator, and I'm also a product designer, and I'm super, super excited to be here with you all. Thanks, Alexa, for agreeing to doing this with me. Yes. Thanks for putting me on to this uh, idea, the designer tag. So, so cool. Um, let's jump right into the questions, with the first being, how long have you been in UX design? Oh, I think... I've only been in it for, I think, about two years. That's that's how long I've been in it. But how long have you been in it? I know we talked about it a little bit. <laughs> yeah, so I, I got into product design back in 2013. So mm -hmm. that is, oh my gosh, well, eight years ago. Eight years ago? Is that right? Whoa. Yeah. That's like a child. Yeah, that is a small <laughs> child. <laughs> oh my God, I've never thought about it that way. Yeah. There yeah. are eight-year-old children that are like about to enter middle school. That yeah, that's like a personification of how long you've been in this yeah. industry. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So that will provide perspective for the rest of this conversation. Mm -hmm. The next question I have for you is what's your design mantra? Something that I've struggled with a lot, like I, I guess like during my time as a design student and even now, like just going into more internships and, and, and you know, adapting to different teams and, and also adapting to just different projects is just trusting in the process. So I think, I'll, albeit like very common as probably a quote that everybody has that each designer has on their wall, but really just having trust, having faith in the process is something that I just constantly have to remind myself. I think more and more more as time goes by and as I talk to like so many people especially who are getting started I think it's really important that we remember the value of slowness and like slowing down and recognizing that some of the best things in life just take time and so trusting that process is something I super resonate with as well but you know when I was thinking about this I even like looked up mantra I was like like what like what is it does that like a mantra again and it's kind of like a tagline or like you know something that that guides you like a principle or values and so the thing that I held on to about the thing that I really want to bring to everything that I put myself into is that I want to help design products or experiences that help maximize human potential and yeah <laughs> oh, that is so good yeah oh, I that's love something that. I really care about because and I, and I feel really lucky because I think in my professional work now especially like I really get to help learn and listen to how people want to grow or what they want to do next and help provide opportunities for them to 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 reach that and to like really yeah reach that next step whatever it is for them so I really enjoy that that's my thing <laughs> I love that okay so for designers I think especially being inspired is really important. My question for you is, where do you get inspiration? I have two answers for this. And the first, I feel like they're, they're quite opposite in, in some ways. And the first is, I think my biggest like times of like, oh my gosh, this is a light bulb idea. Like, you know, the, the feeling that you have when you have a shower thought and you think that it's just going to like win Shark Tank is when I see something that's frustrating to me. So whether it is, I, I remember just thinking about like when the Black Lives Matter um, movement was, you know, starting to have a voice and was being amplified, I felt really frustrated because I was like, I want to learn. I have all this information that I am so overwhelmed with. I feel frustrated because I can't go outside and protest. And, and, you know, like I had all of these restraints on me, but then I was just like, you know what? I'm going to design something that helps me feel fulfilled in that area. So I was just like that. I feel like interestingly enough, when I get frustrated, that's when I get inspired. So that takes a lot of reframing, but that's, that's honestly where it happens for me, especially in frustrating user experiences that we have day to day. But another thing, like the other, the other place where I find inspiration is when I'm, 
actually like unplugged. I think a lot of the time when, you know, like I can find inspiration on like Pinterest and, and, and all of that. But like, I feel like sometimes too, when I have these like times where I'm like just walking and like, I see like a bunch of plants. I love plants. And as some people may know, like I love plants. Like when I was like going out into like the botanic gardens here in Chicago and I was just like, are there plant apps out there? Like, how do I know, like, you know, like where, how can I make my own plant app like that, that works for me? Like, and, and so it's like random thoughts that just come from like things and nature around me. I think that's when I get like, you know, that like happy, warm feeling of like, wow, like I can do something about this idea. I, I super resonate with both of those actually. I think I really like what you said about like those moments where like you're frustrated or like a user experience or like, you know, something in your life is just like, it's so frustrating. Like I think design and is is about reframing in a sense it's mm -hmm. like okay this thing is i don't feel good about this like how can we make this better i i super resonate with that uh and i also very much love going out and being inspired by the energy and being pulled uh, in whatever which way just like kind of being off of technology but i will mm -hmm. say i think the thing that gets me the most inspired is other people Hey, so, yeah, true. when I'm around like other people, whether it's, you know, let's say, let's just say design specifically, right? So if, like I, I'm at a design event or I'm meeting up with other designers or like creators or entrepreneurs, like I often will have like a spark and I'm just like so excited. And I know like I'm super extroverted. So if I can bring someone else into my project or into that thing, like it's going to happen because that just fuels my energy. Okay, great. Let's pivot a little bit to something more specific. I'm wondering what is your UX research method of choice? Ooh. So I know that for sure there's like different types of UX research methods and I have barely scratched the surface on like what they are and like actually doing them. But something that I just really, really enjoyed during my time at Wish is just being able to prep for and conduct user interviews. And it was like for an A-B test and it was something that I I didn't realize how fun it would be, but also really eye-opening to see somebody else's like unfiltered opinions and all of that. So I want to say user interviews for me is just something that gives me life and, and makes me feel like I'm really making an impact for the user. Yeah, I love you. Yeah, you know, I think in a sense, mine is somewhat similar. I think I've always just super enjoyed running usability testing mm -hmm. because it's just that it's, it's similar in that, like whether you're like connecting with them, uh, like with a person who's like running through your product or it's recorded and they're kind of doing it on their own. I just love sort of understanding how people actually use the thing that you've worked on and created and then sharing that out or like analyzing it, improving it, and then running it back. I just, I love that part of the process. I'm very curious to hear if we have potentially the same answer to my next question, but we will see. Okay. <laughs> what would you do if you were not in the tech industry? <laughs> That's a good question. I don't know. Being a YouTuber, a full-time YouTuber is something that is like related to the tech industry. So I feel like that's like, hmm, like I could, I, I could hopefully do that, you know, sometime in the future. But I, I feel like I definitely would be doing something in the movie industry. Like I think either helping work on films with design, like set design, whether that may be acting in films, directing in films, I just have always had a huge passion and love for that. So that's probably my answer. It's, 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 it makes me, for some reason, it makes me feel like, I don't know, like nervous to say out loud, but that's, that's just something that like has my heart. Oh my God. Okay. I was right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh. Yes. So I, I've always said this. I think if I was not a designer, I would have loved to be an actor. It's funny, like it's taken a lot of work for me to get better at public speaking and being comfortable in front of the camera. I only did theater camp once, one, for one <laughs> month growing up, like I didn't stick with it. But I was always that kid in like high school who, when the teacher was like, does anyone want to read, like read out loud or like whenever we'd have, you're reading like plays or whatever. I was always like secretly, but also just like, me. Yeah, me. <laughs> it's like we all know that I can do it best. So me. And then I was like hyper focused on like my lines and like being so excited to read it. So I think that's what I would love to get into. And it is it is similar to YouTube in a sense. Like I said in our last video, when that's recorded on your channel, YouTube is a bit performative and it's just so fun and telling stories. And honestly, I think actors are some of the most, you know, intelligent people on the planet. Uh yeah 
you have to have really high EQ, emotional intelligence to be good at acting. Mm -hmm. And I just really, I really value that. And I super appreciate actors for that, that sort of work. So that would be my answer. (laughs) Oh, I love that. Okay. Just watch out. If like, if we had an alternate universe, like imagine doing us like a Q and A, but like acting edition. The acting, (laughs) the acting tag. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe something similar. (laughs) Okay, great. I love this question. The question is, what fonts do you use for your brand and why? That's really good. I feel like this is like coming at my graphic design background. So my typefaces that I currently use on my website is Freight Display Pro and the family of, I think it's Neuhaus Grotesque. (laughs) I'm just like, I've been like battered by my typography teacher for saying like new has grotesque, but whatever. So I have a thing for just beautiful pairings of serif and sans serif typefaces. Like, I don't know why, but it just brings me so much joy once you find the perfect pair that work together. And I think I I use these two typefaces because one, it like displays this, like this, like almost like a versatility that I feel like reflects like what I do where it's just like I can I can be a graphic designer I can also do product design and and stuff like that and I feel like I I've always wanted to just somehow like show that without being like too in your face so I think it's it's almost like a nod to that aspect of me as a person and then also just having like freight display has this almost like feminist vibe to it so that's why I use it and it just makes me happy all the time I always like find joy whenever I see it so yeah those are my two (laughs) those are my two typefaces how about you the fonts that I use for my brand are Futura PT Mm -hmm. and a font called Pacifico so Futura PT is like I believe it's like like a Google free it's Google's free font version of Futura which is a pretty like well-known standard typeface that you would learn about like if you went to art school (laughs) and I think I used it because it was a Google free font and I really do love Futura it's a good sans serif typeface lots of different weights, also very versatile in that way. Go really, really thin, really, really bold. I picked Pacifico, which is also probably a Google free font. And it's kind of like a script sort of feeling font. Yes. And I chose that one because especially back when I started my YouTube channel, basically I've like, I've always kind of been like a tomboy, especially when I was growing up, like I play sports. I just like, I've always kind of been that way. And especially when I started my YouTube channel, I was like, I really want to embrace more of like my feminine side. So I added that one in to be a little bit more feminine. And uh, yeah, that's, that's I love that. Yeah. yeah, I feel like it nods to to like the playfulness that, that I, I, I feel whenever I like see your videos. So Perfect. Okay, a couple more questions here before we completely wrap things up. I want to know, where's the next place that you want to travel to? Oh my gosh. (laughs) I haven't thought about this in a hot second. One of the places that I am wanting, I have always wanted to visit is Japan. And one of the reasons why, like, that's the first thing that came into mind is that my friend, Hanami, one of my best friends. She's like my best friend in design school. She is from Japan and I have not seen her since the pandemic hit and like she had to go back home. And I just cannot wait for that time. We were thinking of it as like a graduation trip. And, you know, maybe that thing can like happen nowadays that, you know, things are looking up, but just having like my own personal tour guide, like showing me the, maybe the lesser known gems in Japan and in her hometown. So yeah, I definitely think Japan just the I love the culture. I adore the food. I just, I, I, I just want to breathe the air in which the, <laughs> the, I want to breathe their air. I want to just experience all of that. So Japan is definitely my answer. Well, yeah. Are we like the same freaking person? <laughs> <laughs> this is my, that's my answer. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. I super appreciate Japan and Japanese culture and I love the food. I, I want to taste all of the matcha. Like I really want to go to Kyoto and do a tea ceremony. My stepmom is Japanese and so she grew up over there before um, moving over here to the States and I'm planning to get all of her recommendations, but oh, I just like that. cannot, cannot wait to visit. Okay, that brings us to my very last question, which is, what time do you wake up in the morning? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Iowa. That, that answer varies depending on if I have school or not. But actually, something that not a lot of people know about me is that I am a morning person. So I grew up earlier years in the Philippines and Indonesia. And in order for me to get to school, it literally took like an hour car ride. So I had to get up and like do everything like in the morning and like have a good mood or else I would be, my mom would not be happy. And I think that just waking up in the morning, having that like morning ritual and just like being able to have that me time, I really think is just my favorite part of the day. So I would say probably around seven is when I try to force myself out of the bed, but more realistically, probably eight. <laughs> I love mornings as well. Like I love the the different rituals. Like I love making a, a, a matcha in the morning and just like having that me time too. I love it. Even just like, I like kind of setting expectations for the day. So that sometimes mean like means like going through emails. Like I like kind of just filtering through, like get, get the stuff out that I don't really need to think about jotting down some notes. Like, what am I going to do today? I'm also getting up somewhere between 7 and 8 a.m. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really trying for 7. It's usually around 7.30, maybe 8. Yeah. Like, yeah. what happened today? I don't even know. Uh, 7.30 happened today. Yeah. So Good. Yeah. what we've discovered is that you and I are the same person. <laughs> yeah. So takeaways for today. We're the same. Thank you. <laughs> that help. Okay, so this this actually brings us to the end of the video. Julia, thank you so much. If you haven't already checked out Julia's design tag video, this is a part two of a two-part series. So make sure to go over to her channel and check it out. There will be a link in the description. And I'm also going to tag a couple of my friends who I think should also participate in this design tag initiative. And they are my friends, Sarah and Maddie. And I'm going to also link their YouTube channels below. Sarah makes videos about product design. Maddie creates videos about like UX and freelancing. So they're also, they have some great content over there. So make sure to check them out. That is it for today though. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you for like allowing me to collaborate with you. This is honestly like, uh, like, Again, like me fangirling and, and, and just being very honored to be able to have a place in your space. So well, yeah, this is the very beginning, I'm sure, to many, many other collaborations <laughs> and fun things that I think we'll, we'll work on in the future. So it's, it's been so, so great getting to know you and you're freaking awesome. So thank you for inviting me to be a part of this. <laughs> Likewise. Likewise. All right. All right. That's it for now. So um, don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to Julia's channel. And I hope to see you in the next video. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.